Welcome back to the shop guys. In this video I will be servicing a set of YZ forks. This will work on any YZ 125, 252 stroke, 250F or 450F from the years 2006 to 2023 or current. Typically a servicing is just getting the old fluid out, making sure everything is in good shape and clean and getting new fluid in there all bled and everything like that. However, sometimes you got to replace the seals. These seals are not leaking. And so I technically don't have to replace these seals. I could just change the fluid out. We'll be good to go. But I got to tell you, these forks have 200 hours on original seals. And I'm not even kidding you. So I might as well just go ahead and do them. So yeah, I picked up a Yamaha fork seal kit. You can't beat that. It comes with the bushings too. And that's going to be, that's another reason why I'm going to do the seals. At 200 hours, even though the seals are not leaking, I'm, the bushings might be a little bit sloppier. And I got some Yamalube. S1 suspension fluid it says S1 right there. You can pick all this stuff up pretty much anywhere as, as Ab Tool Guy says any of your usual scumbags. If you're just doing a servicing obviously you just need fluid and you will need this tool right here to take off the, the cap at the top of the fork and also this tool right here to open up the inner chamber to get that fluid out and bled. You can pick these up on eBay, Rocky Mountain or any of the usual scumbags. And if you're also going to be doing the fork seals while you're in there, you're going to need some fork seal drivers. However, mine are in another state right now, so I'm just going to improvise and use this PVC. There's, you could, you know, as I say, there's more than one way to skin a cat. You'll see when we get there. And then you also need just your standard tools. All right, let's get started. You're going to need that tool. The best way to loosen this up is while it's still on the bike, sometimes you have to loosen the, the triple clamps to slide the fork down a little bit to be able to get this on because it likes to hit your handlebars and stuff. But I already loosened them up while they're on the bike. And also you will need at least the top one loose because um, the top triple clamp likes to squeeze on this which means you'll be twisting and you won't be able to get it loose. So have the bottom triple clamp hold the fork from spinning, loosen the top and then you can loosen them. I've already loosened them up while they're on the bike. Now if you did not loosen them or if someone brought you their forks and said, hey rebuild my forks. You can, I've done it a million times. You can set the tool on here, hold it on with your hand, take a hammer, go bow, bow and you can, you can hit and loosen it up. Don't worry. But it's just much easier and cleaner job if you do it while loosen it up while it's on the bike. So here we go. All I'm going to do right here is just drain the outer chamber's fluid, get that stuff out of there. Oh yeah, look at that. Yep, so I'm just going to sit here and work this stuff out. After I stroke it a few times like that, what I'll do is I will screw this cap back on by hand. You don't have to get it all the way on, just get it where the rubber seal that the O-ring seal is in there is just into the shock. I mean the fork tube and that'll seal it. Now I'm gonna just set it upside down right here for a while, let everything drain to the bottom while I work on draining the other fork. And draining the other fork. Woo! All right, now the first fork's been upside down for a little while now, so let's see. I should, a little more should come out. Doesn't really matter. It's all going to come out when we take it apart anyway, but this makes it a little cleaner so you don't have fluid falling everywhere. All right, both the outer chambers are drained. Now we're going to count how many clicks they're set at, just so we can return it back to that when we're finished. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That one's at ten. Oh, well, actually eleven, just barely eleven. And the other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There it is, eleven. Now I'm going to take the rebound adjusters on both of them and just back them all the way out. Now that we have our settings recorded, just back this all the way out. Now to keep it from binding anything when we go to put it back together. I'm going to take out the rebound adjuster assembly, bottom part of the fork here, whatever you call this thing. You can use a socket with a ratchet and you can take the axle and set it right there and give you some, you know, something to hold the fork with as you wrench it. But I have an impact, so that's what I'm using.
Now, I won't be using that when it's time to put it back together. That's just to take it apart. Although I probably shouldn't pull the axle back out. I need that to compress the fork now. So what I'll do is compress the fork. This tool, oh by the way, you see that part? You can use a crescent wrench too if you don't if, if your tool doesn't come with that on there. Alright, so with the axle back in here it allows me to compress the fork. You will need a 15 millimeter wrench. This is the only place on a YZ, the only place that uses a 15 millimeter. I'm not even kidding. Hold that with the wrench. Pop that off. Let's pull this little tube out. It just sits right here in the middle. And just go ahead and yank that out. Press the fork back down, slide that out, and then we can lift this whole assembly right off the inner chamber and the spring. Set that on the bench, and then, then we have the inner chamber. But we're going to set that aside for right now and go ahead and replace the seals. Right, I'm just going to tap the dust seal down. The flat head here, just get right underneath it. And then they have a clip in here that holds the main seal in. You can usually take a smaller flat head, pop it right underneath it. There it is. Now here's where it gets fun. This is where you bang them apart. There we go. Let me turn this around. We'll go ahead and slide this bushing off. Set that aside. If you've never done this before, it doesn't hurt to set things off in order that they come off. So when it's time to put it back on, you can put it in the same order. Obviously, you'll be putting the new stuff on, but you can put it on the same order. I've done this a million times. Doesn't mean I won't make a mistake, but even then I usually catch my mistakes. So I don't care. I can just throw them in a pile. Oops, forgot the dust seal. Alright, now I have these all stripped down. I'm going to take them outside, get them good and cleaned up, and then we'll start putting them back together. Alright, when we go to put these seals on, this lip right here, this is a... This is this recess spot right here is where the uh, upper bushing sits, but that lip right here is real sharp and it likes to catch the seal and possibly damage the seal. So what I do is I take a piece of electrical tape, put it right around that sharp lip, there we go, and then when I slide the seal on, because this is not too sharp right here, you can usually just put seal on, but when it's time to go across that, it'll just slide right on. Alright, open up the seal kit, see what we have. A seal. Another seal. Another seal. Another seal. A bushing. Bushing. That's it. All right, let's get these new seals on. Now, if you're not replacing seals, if you're just servicing, you could have skipped all this and you could just fast forward in the video a little bit. Um, this is just if we're gonna do the seals. I, you know, otherwise, do not, do not split these forks if you don't plan on doing the seals. All right, gonna start with the dust seal. Got that one on. And we're going to do the oil seal. As you see, what I'm doing is I'm kind of helping it, the, the lip, get over get over the, the, the edge of the top of the fork tube here. So it doesn't flip over on us. Alright. Now I can remove that electrical tape now that we have the seals on. metal ring and uh, 
now we got to put the bushings on we got two bushings you want to put this one on first and then this one and this one you just set right back in that groove right here All right, let's flip this around here we're gonna slide these two together slide that in there but I slide it together only about this far you'll see you see that part right here it's a little more narrow it gets the fork tube gets fatter right up here but this parts more narrow I stay right here with this narrow spot right about there because that does kind of help me get this bushing into its groove all right this can be a pain in the butt sometime I'm just gonna use two small flat heads and kind of just you notice I have the gap up top this is how I do it there's more than one way to skin a cat I kind of just rock it into place you get it close enough and then you can slide this ring up and you can use your fork seal driver or since we don't have a fork seal driver today I use my makeshift fork seal driver Now when you use a hammer like that, you always want to slide the hammer across the fork. You don't want to like pound and hit the fork. Yeah, it's getting there. Now what I've done is slid the forks back together a little bit more. I'll give it one more rub tap and make sure it's all the way in. You'll know when you have it right because there won't be any real drag. <clears throat> if you have some drag, look up in there and see what, how that seal's sitting. I mean that uh, bushing sitting. And uh, if it's on even and they're a little crooked, then you're going to have to get it straight and work that out. And get it all the way in until there's, like I said, so there's no friction. And always make sure you have that rubber ring down on top of the bushing when you use the driver to tap it in. That just guarantees that it presses on the bushing nice and square and doesn't pound up the top of the bushing. I messed up on my recording right here, but what I'm trying to show you is all I do to get the seals in is I press on the silver part of the fork. I press it down like that and that will get it started. I promise you if any of this gave bad results I wouldn't be showing you. But like I said I've done this a million times. Now I'm going to knock the dust seal back down because we do have to finish knocking the oil seal in. All we did right there when I pounded it together is we got that oil seal in there quite pretty far and it just it saves a, a lot of hassle of just trust me it's, it's easier that way. All right, my makeshift fork seal driver again. Same thing as I did with the bushings. If you make a fork seal driver like this, you want to round off the inside edge if you do make your own at home. Wow, that seal is pretty much all, all the way in its groove already. But I'll give it some love tash for my, good measure. You want to push it in until it goes past the little, the little, ah, uh, man, I don't know if I can get you in here to see it. There's a little lips, uh, a little cut out in there or whatever for the uh, the retaining clip to fall into so we got to put this back on now just kind of set that up in there and then you just slide it in with the flathead make sure it make sure it is all the way in all the way around looking good and then guess what there it is ah oh, so nice and smooth now if you're only changing the fluid doing a servicing but not doing the seals and and you're fast forward this is where you want to stop right here because we got new seals in so this is where you would stop and uh, let's move on to the inner chamber all right, we have the inner chamber laid on the bench here. I still have the spring on it and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and slide the spring off of it. Set that aside. 
on this model the cup doesn't come off some models you can slide this off some models you can't that's fine I'm okay with it staying there out of curiosity before I take it apart let me stroke it still well bled I serviced these about 40 hours ago they've never had seals in them put in them though okay now we're gonna take the uh, should I say they've never had seals replaced them they had seals put on when they were new but 200 hours my wife has rode this bike with the same set of seals it's pretty amazing I usually get about 100 to 150 hours myself but anyway, if you saw, I put this tool right here on, on the uh, on the fork cap, and then you have the tool that falls right in the middle here. I'm going to take a ratchet, or a wrench. I usually get about 100 to 150 hours out of a set of seals myself. Some people, you know, might get a lot less. Um, I, but she got 200 hours out of them. That's pretty crazy. All right, now that I got that loose, you can see it's it's loose. But if you try to yank it out, it's kind of sucked in there. So what you do is you come down here to the bottom of the fork, you compress that. Watch this. As I compress that, that raises. See that? So you compress it all the way down, and then while it's all the way down, you can wiggle this off. There we go. It takes a little bit of a tugging, but you can get it off. All right that aside now we got to dump the fluid out of this inner chamber dump the fluid you have these two holes right here I usually cover over these with my finger so the fluid only comes out the cap and then I'll hold it upside down and I will stroke it now I'm just gonna set them upside down on top of a towel and just let them drip dry, drip drain for a little bit right, I'm just gonna use a clean shop rag and just wipe this up get it all nice and clean all right I'm gonna give this a good flushing what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sacrifice a little bit of this beautiful s1 fluid I'm not gonna fill it all the way up or anything eh, put about that much you know just just a little bit you don't have to do a lot and just stroke it a little bit go slow though if you stroke this thing fast want me to show you what would happen you really want me to show you watch this that's what happens so stroke it slow so it doesn't shoot out the top stroke it a good few times then while you're covering them two holes put your hand up here flip it around shake it around stir it around you're basically just trying to capture all the old fluid and dump it out. I'm just trying to capture all the old fluid so we get a good flush. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll just let this sit upside down on a clean rag for a little bit and let the last little bit of drips come out. While that's draining, I'm just going to take my time with another clean shop rag and just wipe this thing up. Just kind of clean it up a little bit. You want to check this plastic right here for cracks. They are known to break sometimes so I'm just looking it over it looks good all the bushings look good the shim stack staying put together everything's looking good the spring is a little loose that's the way they come don't panic that's just how they are all right let's go ahead and start filling the inner chamber up now now before I start filling up the inner chamber I'm gonna take this lock nut I guess you can call it that and bottom it out as far towards the body of the inner chamber that I can all right now I'm gonna cover them two holes remember the two holes I showed you right here and I'm gonna fill the fluid up in just to the holes looking down in the hole here I'm gonna fill the fluid up just to the top of them or to the bottom of them two holes like I said covering it with my finger and then you take the shock Again, keep covering them holes or it will come out. And then you pull it out. And as you do it, pull slowly. You don't want it shooting all the way across the room. You'll see air bubbles start to rise up as you stroke it. So, yeah. Just keep stroking it. Nice and easy. 
Easy does it. Keep your hand over them holes. And at the bottom half of it, I like to just when it's full like that, almost up to the holes. If you have it almost extended, you can yank on it hard down here without it shooting across the room. I like to give it a couple, push it in about three inches and yank it back down real quick. You can do that once it's once you have that much fluid in it, only at the last three inches because obviously it would have to shoot through so much fluid to shoot out across your shop that it, all the fluid on top of it kind of holds it in place. So, all right, now that we got that bled, let me give it one more stroke for good measure. There we go. Now I'm going to put the fluid back up to them two little holes because it's going to be a little bit lower than them two holes now since we bled it. Put it back up them two little holes. Then I'll take this piece right here, slide it in. So And just push it down gently. Now I'm going to start releasing my fingers from the holes. I'll hold it, the fingers a little bit over the hole so it don't shoot fluid across the room. But I'll still keep my fingers pretty much right there so if it does go to shoot, it doesn't shoot across the room. I'm pressing in as far as, see? I'm pressing in as far as you can in. I can't press it anymore. You see that, right? So here's what I'll do. So now I can't press it anymore. It just feels springy. And that's because the piston is hydro locked in here. There's no more volume for it to take up with the shaft fully extended. So what I'll do is while I'm pressing against that spring pressure, I'm, my two thumbs are pushing down here. <clears throat> I will also push or compress the, the fork in our chamber. See how I'm pushing it down? You want to compress it to about an inch from the very bottom. And fluid will come out of these two, two holes as you do that. Then you pick it up and watch. As I press this in, you'll see the shaft come down. See it come down and see how I'm able to push it in. And when the shaft's all the way down, this will be really close at that point. If you push, if you compress it all the way down to about, to almost to the last inch, then I can take this tool here. And that's it. You can go ahead and tighten that up with the two tools at this point if you want to. But um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stroke it a few good times like this. Because we don't know if there could be another piece, of, another piece of air in there. I doubt it, but this is for good measure. Stroke it a few good times. And what I like to do is hold the fork at a slight angle. One of the holes. Let me get it up in here so you can see if that helps, don't it? All right. Hold the fork at a slight angle, one of the holes facing up, and then compress it again all the way to the bottom. There you go. That is fully bled. Listen to this. She's good. All right, now with the inner chamber upside down, I'll go ahead and slide the spring back on. There we go. And then I'll take that metal rod and slide it back into the fork here. Now remember, I bottomed out this nut all the way. Remember this, this lock nut? You bottomed it out closest to the, to the, uh, the body. That's for um, when we go to tighten up the cap, and I'll explain that in a second. And now I'll take the fork, slide this back on top. Put the axle in there. I'll use my finger to keep that right in the middle so it doesn't get caught up on anything as I compress the fork against the spring. And so I push it far enough down where I can get that tool underneath there. Now remember, we bottomed that out. That's important because when we go to put this on, this inside piece right here, for it to work properly, it has to bottom out. 
it has to bottom out right on that for that inside piece. So that's why you have to have that as bottomed out on uh, as close to the side to the body so that when you tighten this up by hand, it goes on easy. But then right here, it stops. And look, you should have a gap there. When it stops, see, I can't put it on any more than that. There should be a gap because now when we go to tighten these two up, we're going to be basically pulling this up to that and locking it in. So I'll take my 15 millimeter again. And this time I'll use a ratchet wrench 17. There we go. You want to put this pretty tight. Don't strip it or anything. Put it pretty tight. There we go. I have seen them come loose before on people. So that can happen. Alright, got that up. Now all we got to do is just bolt that back down. Holy cow, there we go. Jeez. Alright. Same thing, put it pretty tight. Yeah. Alright. Now I'll take this fork tube, flip it back around. I'll tighten this up by hand for now, just so nothing gets in there. We still have to put fluid in for the outer chamber. Yes, we have fluid in the inner chamber, and that's bled, and it's bled good. There's no air in it. We still have to put fluid in the outer chamber, but I'm gonna wait till I do the other fork first, and then we'll save that for the end. We'll we'll fill up both outer chambers at one time. All right, fork number two, it's the same thing as fork number one. I'm not gonna suffer you through the whole thing. I'm just gonna knock this out off camera real quick. And then once I get this one to where the first one's at, then we'll fill up the outer chamber. If I run into anything strange, I'll pop up and let you know. Let me get this done real quick. All right, all that's left is filling the outer chamber with the correct volume that, that uh, I've chosen to put in. There's a range. Uh, in the description down below I will put a link to Yamaha's page where you can download the manual for your bike it tells you the standard oil level for the outer chamber and it also tells you the minimum and maximum that is recommended obviously you can run more oil for a uh, more bottom resistance or less oil in the outer chambers for less bottom resistance but try to stay within that range that they give you if you don't know what to run just run the standard that's a good starting point also down in the description will be a link to servicing the shock for the YZ125 252 stroke 250 FN 450 from the year 2006 to 2023 or current. I do prefer to service my shock and my forks at the same time because anytime you change all the fluid and either the fork or the shock it's going to increase the dampening it's going to feel like it did when the bike was new you know how typically people say it's a new bike so it's a little bit stiffer well, that's one of the reasons why it's stiffer is because the fluid is fresh and new so if you do only the forks and not the shock the forks are going to feel stiffer than the rear if you had it balanced previously if you do the shock and not the forks the shock will feel stiffer than the front if you haven't done it previously not only stiffer but also even more rebound dampening it'll just be it'll just feel overall more connected and more controlled all right, so now it's time to go ahead and fill up the outer chamber with the correct amount of fluid. Yamaha recommends using S1, the same fluid that we use for the inner chamber. That's what they uh, suggest using for the outer chamber. And you should probably do that. However, I do things a little bit differently. I use synth Mobile One Synthetic Automatic Transmission Fluid. I'll take a split second to explain why. Now, I'm not suggesting this. Try this at your own risk. And uh, for all the people out there that say you should never do that, well, just don't do it. But that's what I'm doing. Alright, so real quick, I learned this from a guy years ago, I think in 2006, that did suspension for a living. Um, he believed in using this on the outer chamber. He said the fork seals last a lot longer, plus you'll have less stiction, and the forks will feel smoother and better. I tried it out for myself, and I actually, I, I think that's what I felt. Um, I can tell you I get a lot of life out of my fork seals. Like I said, 100 to 150 hours for me. My wife, she got 200 hours out of these fork seals and they weren't even leaking yet. The theory is this. This is a hydraulic fluid that's act, all the properties of this fluid is mainly for the control of the dampening through the piston and the valve shims and everything like that. This is 
more focused on getting the dampening right so when you ride the bike it feels good now all the dampening is done in the inner chamber so um, you definitely want to use that in the inner chamber and the outer chamber the only thing the outer chamber fluid does is it controls the bottom resistance by you know how much fluid you have in there um, because there's an air spring as the sport force compress there's only so much air in there and the rest of its fluid so the more fluid you run the less air and as the forks compress since they are a sealed unit they have to compress that air so that's one of the purposes of the outer chamber fluid the other purpose is to lube the shafts so the bushings can slide up and down freely and to keep the seals lubed and clean now his theory was automatic transmission fluid actually has like modifiers and seal conditioners and things like that because you know automatic transmissions obviously they have seals and they have bushings and they have all that kind of stuff you know so he says because of that this is actually better for your outer chamber it fits the application better now there are people that will say well if you use that it can bleed into the inner chamber where you have the s1 maybe that's true i don't know i can tell you if i if i service my suspension at about 20 to 30 hours i don't see any red remember this is red that's clear if I service it in 20 to 30 hours, I don't see any red in my inner chamber, which means it wasn't getting there. But if I take it to 40 or above 40, I can start seeing some red in my inner chamber. So maybe there is a little bit of bleed. I don't know. But at the same time, you got to remember the red that's in here is actually just a dye. And you know how dyes are. You can take one little drop of dye, put it in water, and the whole thing. So you got to remember that the shaft on the inner, inner chamber is going in and out and that die can probably just just hang it onto the metal just like this right here can probably work its way through after a while and a little bit of dye will make all that turn red maybe maybe not i don't know all i know is when i use this my fork seals seem to last forever and uh, the uh there's just less diction it's just nice and smooth so that's what i'm gonna use please don't cry let's move on all right for this application i'm running about 350 10 cc's of oil or transmission fluid fork oil cooking oil I'll take the cap slide it down just a little bit here and pour it on in And I'm bringing this back up and just tighten it by hand again. So as of right now, as you know, th this inner piece is only tightened up by hand and that outer piece is only tightened up by hand. But that's good enough to seal because of the O-rings that they use to seal. We will be getting them nice and snug in a minute, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Let me go ahead and get the 310 cc's in this fork leg now. All right, go ahead and fill this one up. Let me double check, make sure I got it good. Tighten this one down by hand. Okay, I went ahead and set the rebound clicker for the rebound uh, back to 10 or 11 clicks. I never had to touch the compression clicker because that doesn't move when you take this assembly out and put it back in. So you don't even have to worry about that. You can just leave it wherever it's at. If it was feeling good, just leave it there. But you know, uh, the bottom does change when you when you uh, remove that cap. So that's why you want to count it before you take it apart. I put it back to where I was at. And that is it. These are fully serviced with new seals and bushings. They are ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and put them back on the bike. Alright, let's give it the boing test. That one feels good. You don't have to do that. but. And then the last thing we have to do before we get them on the bike right I slide them up into the triple clamps just to the top right here so I can get that tool in there I tighten up the bottom 10 millimeter doesn't even need to be real tight just a little tight 
take that tool, pop it right in there, and I can go ahead and tighten her down. And you'll see it'll turn both at the same time. Watch, see them both turn? There it is. Now I'll go ahead and loosen up that 10 millimeter, set the forks at the proper height they need to be, and assemble this front end. But otherwise, the forks are done and ready to go. I appreciate every single one of my subscribers and catch you guys next time.